Hi, and welcome again to Geocasts, where we'll teach you all about using Google Maps to build better apps. I'm Lawrence, and in this video, I'm going to talk all about building an interactive experience using the Places API. It's a simple game where you can define three real-world places and then have your users go to them as part of the overall narrative of saving Alyssa here from being trapped in a parallel dimension. In part one of this tutorial, we identified and stored three places using the Places API, Firebase, and some unique game codes. So the next thing to talk about is how to use the Places API to see if your user is at the right place so that they can unlock the next part of the story. The Places API is designed to make your app stand out with detailed information about over 100 million places around the world across a wide range of categories, and it uses the same database as Google Maps. We use this information in part one of the tutorial. But not only that, the Places API has location detection, giving you the ability to tell if you are in the right place. That makes it easier. I can just tell you to go to a specific place like, say, the Seattle Space Needle, instead of dealing with latitude and longitude or addresses. That's right, and the Places API can detect if the user is there. Well, of course I'm there, silly. So let's take a look at how you would build the app to scan and detect where you are. Okay, I see you are scanning for the bridge between our dimensions, but you aren't close to it yet. In the previous video, we saw how the user can pick three real-world places and save them to a Firebase database using a code to define them. So, if you want to play the game, then you start it with that code, and you'll be guided through those three places as part of the narrative. But of course, the game needs to know if you're at that place in order to unlock the next part of the story. So let's take a look at the code to achieve this. It uses the Place Detection API's Get Current Place call to find the current location. This requires the Access Find Location permission to be set in your app. Remember, you can learn all about permissions at this link. Do note that this is subject to limits, so make sure you don't call it too often. You can learn more about the usage limits here. So, when building an experience like this one, instead of constantly polling the device location and calling the Places API to get place information, it's probably better for you to do it on demand i.e., in this case, Alyssa told me to go to a specific place, so when I think I'm nearby, I can ping her, and she can tell me if I'm close enough or not. The call returns a place likelihood buffer in a pending result. A place likelihood buffer is a list of places near your current location and the likelihood that you are at that place. So, for example, in a dense city area, there could be two places next door to each other which are recognized by the Places API. And if you're in between the two, the Places API will return both of them as well as anything else nearby. This will come with a likelihood of which one you're in. So all you have to do is look at this list and see if the place you are looking for is on it, and if the likelihood that you were there is above a reasonable threshold, say 60%, or 0.6 in this case. And then you can go on to the next part of the game. It's really that simple. If it were that simple, I wouldn't have been trapped in this parallel dimension. I guess I should have used the Places API instead of the Flux Capacitor. Good idea. Thanks for watching this Geocast, and if you want to learn more about Google Maps, check out the Google Developers site, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.